Everybody, it's me, Friendly Neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in a Coffin, where we learned that with great kills, they must also come great nails. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this is my Nails in a Coffin series. I perform a kill analysis on the on-screen kills in horror movies, and I rate how well a person responds to a life-threatening situation. I use Nails in a Coffin as a rating system. One nail means a victim made a lot of stupid decisions that aided in their demise. But a victim can get up to four nails in a coffin, such as if they fought really hard, sacrificed, and sa uh, sacrificed themselves to save others. So the more smart decisions you make, the more nails you get, which more nails are always better. I just wrapped up covering the Puppet Master franchise a few weeks ago, so I'm taking a short break from covering big franchises, and I figure I cover a few standalone uh, movies for a couple weeks. Today, I'm nailing 2012's ATM. It's about a late night visit to an ATM machine, and three co workers end up in a desperate fight for their lives and become trapped by an unknown man. That should wrap up my intro, everybody. So let's get started. Let's see how these victims in this movie stand up to my nails in a coffin. Did they make any stupid decisions that aided in their deaths? Well, let's find out as we nail ATM. David is a stockbroker having trouble asking out his co worker, Emily. They're at a Christmas party, and he offers the drivers home. Reluctantly, he also agrees to drive home his drunk co-worker, Corey. During the ride, Corey has David stop by a local ATM booth, needing to withdraw some cash so they can buy some pizza. When they get to the ATM, Corey goes inside the booth, and David is talking to Emily. A little while, Corey has an issue with this card, and he calls David to go help him out. They leave Emily in the car, and after a few moments, she's kind of getting a little uncomfortable being by herself, you know, in an empty parking lot. So she gets out of the car and she goes to meet the guys in the booth. Since Corey can't pull out money, David pulls out some money and all three of them go to leave the ATM booth. When they get to the door, they see a man standing there in a parker with his face obstructed. And I'm just going to refer to him as the man in this video since that's how he's listed in the credits. Corey just wants to leave, but David and Emily are a bit concerned since the man is just standing there. They think he's going to rob him. But Corey thinks it's nothing, and when he opens the door, the man takes a step towards the ATM, causing Corey to retreat back inside the booth. He yells at the guy if he needs to get inside the booth, if that's what he's waiting for, but there's no response from the man. Okay, we're going to get to our first kill. The three of them are still trying to figure out what to do since they're trapped in this ATM booth. They see a man walking his dog, and he's standing in the parking lot. The man in the parker quickly walks over to the dog walker and the dog walker asks the man, hey, how's it going? But there's no response. The man in the parker is getting closer. He's walking kind of briskly and the dog, were at, the dog walker, I should say, asks, hey, is something I can help you with? Well, just then the man slugs the dog walker and the dog walker falls to the ground. The scene cuts to the reaction of those three guys in the booth. Then we see the man smashing the dog walker's head into the ground, repeatedly killing him. First set of nails is going to the dog walker, and I'm going to give him one nail in the coffin. Why was he walking his dog at 1 o'clock in the morning in an empty parking lot? I mean, he even unleashed his dog and let him go find somewhere to pee. I have two dogs. I don't think I would ever unleash my dog in the middle of an empty parking lot at 1 a.m. in the morning. Um, anyways, when he saw the guy in the parker walking briskly towards him, he really didn't do anything. Maybe it's just me, but if someone who I can't really make out clearly who they are is walking towards me in that manner... I'm going to go on the defense just to prepare myself, especially the Perkins walking really fast to me. But that guy just stood there with no sense of self-preservation, street smarts, or common sense. But, yeah, he could have done a lot of things. He could have put his guard up. He could have blocked him. He could have tried to fight. But he just kind of stood there as the man walked up right and punched him, never even tried to defend himself. But these types of actions are always going to get you one nail in the coffin. David's phone battery is dead. Corey lost his phone at the party, and Emily left her phone in the car. So calling the cops right now is out of the question. The man grabs a tire iron from David's trunk and he goes to the back of the booth and he's messing around with the power back there and he shuts down the booth's heater. And it is below freezing outside. David wants to negotiate their safety by giving him some money, jewelry, and a watch. So he goes standing outside the booth. He's talking to the man and he tosses an envelope to the man by his feet. When the man goes to pick it up, David runs to his car he quickly gets in, he tries to use Emily's phone, but the man catches up to him, breaks the window, and attacks David. And so David climbs out the other side of the car, he drops Emily's phone, but he is able to make it inside the booth again. Emily uses some lipstick to write on one of the windows, she writes, help. The security guard, who's passing by, pulls him to the parking lot. 
He sees a broken window on David's car, and he gets that about 10 to 15 yards from the booth. He's slowly walking towards the booth. Dave, Corey, and Emily are yelling at him to, hey, call the police. And they're waving their arms, asking for help. He stops for reasons, and then he sees the body of the dog walker from earlier, and he goes to call this emergency into his radio. But he's attacked from behind by the man, and he's beaten to death with a tire iron. The security guard earned himself... One now in a coffin. You know, if you've watched my channel before, you know I grade police and security guards a little harsher since they're supposed to have some type of training. And it appears in movies that means nothing to be a cop or security guard since they always act like they have no clue what's going on, especially in horror movies. Just like this guy. The three in the booth were waving their arms, screaming for help, and he stops to ask, Are you guys okay? Also, he pulls so far away from the booth. He saw the broken window on the car. He saw help on the window of the ATM booth. Yet, he never acted with any urgency till he saw the body of the dog walker. And then it was too late. Yeah, he made too many mistakes here. And I'm going to give him one nail in the coffin. The man shows up again and he drags away the security guard's body. David, Corey, and Emily are trying to figure out what to do. A man with the Parker does enter the booth and David and Corey immediately attack him. They're punching him. They have him down on the ground. He kicks Corey in the face and David has one of his arms locked. Emily is just standing there doing nothing at all. Corey gets up, punches the guy in the Parker a couple more times, grabs his other arm. Dave reaches up and grabs the, a pen chain. He wraps it around this guy's neck and strangles him to death. The guy's name that they killed is Harold Westbrook. Spoiler alert, he wasn't the guy in the Parker the Killer. Just an innocent dude who wanted to pull out some cash. But I'm going to give him three nails in a coffin. Reason why is he was ambushed as soon as he walked into the ATM booth. He had no time to say anything. He was too busy fighting off two men who were trying to beat him to death. He held on as long as he could, but he was outnumbered. He never stopped kicking and fighting the entire time. And I didn't see him do anything stupid. Like I said, he didn't have time to say anything because he was too busy trying to, you know, block punches and, you know, get himself free. But he was in the wrong place at the wrong time dealing with idiots. But he did fight as hard as he could to live. And that's why I'm going to give him three nails in the coffin. Corey and David realizing what they did to get to their feet. Corey looks out the door and he sees the man standing there in the parka. And it just realized that they killed an innocent man. They're breaking down, and Corey wants to leave, so he grabs the man they just killed. He grabs his Parker coat, and he makes a run for it through the parking lot. He's running. David is wanting to go, but as Corey's running, he gets tripped and knocked out by a hanging wire. David wants to go help him, but Emily doesn't want to be left alone. The man in the parker, he set up the wire just for that one instance, and he walks over to Corey, gets on top of him, and then stabs him in the side with a screwdriver. David and Emily think Corey is dead and they're sitting on the floor talking to each other and they're about to kiss. I guess it was a good time for romance. But they get interrupted by banging when the man is trying to break the wall of the booth from behind. David and Emily do see that Corey is still alive and they use this as an opportunity to go run and get Corey. They run outside, pick him up, barely making it back into the booth before the man can get to them. Corey is bleeding from his stab wound and David and Emily are trying to stop the bleeding. Meanwhile, the man pushes David's car in front of the booth, blocking them in. Corey starts to convulse and Emily is still being pretty useless right now. The man goes behind the booth, he takes a hose and he starts to fill the booth with water through the heating vent and I guess his plan was to freeze them to death. While tending to Corey, they find a lighter in his pocket. David and Emily plan to sit off the sprinkler system, which would notify the fire department. David is trying to reach the sprinkler head, but he can't reach it. Emily starts to collect all the paper in the booth, and she puts it in a trash can. They're going to set it on fire and hold it up to the sprinkler. The man gets a folding chair, and he sits and watches all this unfold. Meanwhile, Corey dies from his wounds. Corey earned himself one and a half nails in a coffin. The three of these people are idiots and had multiple opportunities to escape. I don't know why Corey kept listening to David. The three of them would have at least stood a chance against the man. At least all three of them could have run when the man was behind the booth. They could see the road, so I don't know why they didn't run towards it. And I was going to give him an extra half an hour for finally trying to run for it. But where was he running to? Into the darkness? Why not run towards the road or anything else? Like He, wasn't, he couldn't run towards the car because it was disabled, so I don't know where the hell he was running to. So on second thought... Yeah, I'm only going to give this idiot one nail in the coffin. In order to reach the sprinkler head, David puts Emily on his shoulders. Emily is finally contributing something to the cause after standing there the entire time. 
He lifts her up to the sprinkler head. She's holding a trash can and the fire does set off the sprinkler and the fire alarm. The man is still watching from his chair. He doesn't really appear to be concerned at all. Before David can let Emily down, he slips in the water. Emily falls to the floor, smashing her head on the end of a table, and she dies. Emily is our final death in ATM, and she earned herself one nail in the coffin. She was useless in the entire movie. She just stood there with her hands in her pockets in shock the entire time. When David and Corey were fighting the insane man in the boot, she just stood there. Granted, they didn't know that he was innocent at the time, but she just stood there with her hands in her pockets. Just like Corey, she had multiple opportunities to run away. She knew her life was in danger, and that if she didn't do something, she was probably going to die. So why not take a chance and run for it all at the same time? Doing nothing is just as bad as doing something very stupid. And that's what I saw from her in this movie. She stayed on his shoulders for a short while after the sprinklers turned on, but maybe if she got down sooner, she could have survived, but... Emily was just in this movie to be a love interest for David since she was pretty useless to the entire plot of this movie. Too many opportunities for her to do something. She took none of them instead of just staying in there. So our final nail, Emily gets one nail in the coffin. The movie ends with the man crashing a car into the booth as David is crying over Emily. David makes a Molotov cocktail after he finds Corey's bottle of booze. He gets out of the booth and tosses it at the chair where the man is sitting. But it's not the man, it's the security guard's body. The man is standing to the side and he starts to approach David just as the cops and the fire department arrive. The man has to retreat into the darkness. So as the sun rises, David is in the back of a patrol car and all the evidence makes it appear that David is responsible for all this. The man is also a hacker and he altered all the footage of the ATM to make it look like David was the one responsible for everything that just occurred this night. David is taken away in a patrol car and we see the man planning his next attack on people in another ATM. Damn, these people make a litany of bad decisions. Why the hell did they park so far away from the booth? There was 1 o'clock in the morning in an empty parking lot. There was no reason to park so far away. Maybe David was just trying to be a jerk to his drunk, run, drunk friend for kicks. And if you wanted to park far away to give him more time to talk to Emily, you're talking about maybe 5 seconds of a walk. So parking so far away from the booth was stupid. They also outnumbered this guy three to one. They all could have run to the road. They all could have run to the car when they saw the security guard, the one that he was in. They had a glass bottle of liquor with them and Corey had a lighter the entire time. They didn't think about using it. They knew their life was in danger, but none of them really had any fight in them. All Emily did the whole movie was stand there with their hands in their pockets. David never wanted to leave, even though they had multiple opportunities to at least try and escape. If you have to fight, you have to fight. If you die fighting for your life, it's better than just standing there doing nothing, waiting for something to happen, which is what these idiots did. So so for the first time in close to 100 Nails in the Coffin um, episodes, I'm going to give a living person, David, one nail in the coffin for being so stupid. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my nails in the coffin for ATM. Here's a summary of all the nails I've awarded. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please hit that subscribe button and notification bell and check out my other series as well. I have a hard debate series and my Let's Nail This series. I'll put a card up to those playlists for you to check out. We also have a new Nails in a Coffin episode every Friday. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Be good to each other. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember, with great kills, they must also come. Great Nails.